This is getting crazy. I mean, the price tags for some of these shows, Eric, that are decades old. Is this a fair? Is, it, is this a, a reasonable chase of content right here? It's war, and war is on, and we're we're seeing just the early skirmishes. Um, it, you know, there's got to be war on uh, content. Billions of dollars already being spent. More and more will be spent. Uh, distribution. There'll, there'll be the studios against the tech companies. Um, the, uh, everyone's going to go and shoot against uh, Netflix with its uh, 150 million subs, uh, 190 countries distribution. It's going to be a war of attrition. Laura, how are we, how are we going to know and when are we going to know who the losers are, right? Who, well, who? I think we know who losers are because the marginal price to the consumer of streaming services is free. Apple's going to give you a device. They're going to give you free content, even though the posted price is $5. Disney has now said they're going to do $3 a month as long as you sign up for three years. Anyone with a kid under 10 is signing up for three years, which is basically free, $3. And NBC has actually announced Peacock is free. So the marginal price to the consumer, while the government's whining about the fangs, they are bringing consumer pricing down. And I don't know how you sell a $13 a month service or a $15 a month service if you have your Amazon Prime for free because you got shipping and three other services for free because you bought an Apple So that, that last price I got at Netflix was the last. I think it's actually going to have to introduce a $6 service supported with advertising. Netflix. Netflix has to. It cannot support a $13 a month price point Eric, against we've, free. We've seen this in a way before with Gmail, with online storage. I mean, that's free because these big companies need attention and want people on their platforms. Is content any different, and can this play out any differently than, than that did? Well, so a, a big part of it is who has the most content, who has the content that people want. Obviously, Disney for kids. Uh, all the It's really ironic that all of these high-priced shows, $500 million for Seinfeld, $500 million for The Big Bang Theory, all, all these are broadcast television shows that have been on the air for the past 15 to 20 years. I don't know if that's really going to be the content that's going to drive these services forward. Uh, so original content, uh, uh, Netflix already spends about $13 billion a year. Uh, so the, 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 it's a content war. It's going to be what is, is the consumer going to want and where are they going to see the most concentration of that content? What pays for that content? I mean, is it ads? And, and I ask that in part because I've been, I'll admit it, obsessively streaming on my ad-supported Hulu episodes of Veronica Mars lately. Those ads are really annoying. I don't know how many services I could actually want to take on that are ad-supported right now. Well, I, I think uh, everyone's going for the juggler, and they all think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to price this as cheaply as I can, give it for free. Not everybody's going to survive. And, and by the way, the, the, the real losses here are going to be in the, with the cord cutting. This is only going to accelerate cord cutting, which is really interesting for people like AT&T. Laura, um, it seems like there, as you were mentioning, there's downward pressure on the prices that they're charging for subscriptions, those who are charging subscriptions, but still upward prices on certain premium content that the services feel like they have to have. That's true. So who can, who can kind of hold their breath longer or, or win in this game of chicken? Is it uh, the big companies like your Apples, your Amazons, your Googles, who just have a ton of cash to throw at this? Or... Is it the companies that are used to dealing with premium content? So I think it, you have to have a cash hoard to play this battle, and it's really useful if you have a if you have a consumer relationship to bundle this with. So if you show up in a theme park and you get six months of Disney for free, my guess is you're not turning it off when they start charging you five, seven, three dollars a month. Mm. So you got to have a bundle, and then you've got to have a brand. And I do not think content alone is enough to win this war. It's really helpful to have it bundled in with something else. When people tell you they have 3.5 services through SVOD, they forget they have Amazon because they view it as free because it's part of their yeah. shipping. Mm. But I want to make a point about advertising. All of us are watching lots of non-ad-driven content, billions of hours, actually. How do they reach us? You know who benefits? Outdoor. Other services where we are forced to look at ads are going up in price because we're spending more <laughs> time on SVOD services with no ads whatsoever. Hmm. So there's going to be this reallocation towards the value of advertising because it's so hard to oh, reach wealthy people. What about the international story, Eric? Are we now in a stage where those who have a lead outside of the U.S. are going to get some credit for that? I, I, I think so. Netflix has a huge advantage there. They're in 190 countries. About half of the content that I see in the United States is foreign. Um, and, and some of some, We've, we're discovering some fantastic shows as a result of that. So the content is, is getting broader. 
Um, NBC with their Peacock service is announcing a big uh, Spanish language service because of Telemundo. So yeah, but at, at the beginning, people like Disney and, and um, uh, AT&T do not have a foreign advantage. Netflix does. Laura, going back to this idea that cord cutting and, and the role that, you know, the, the loser in all this could potentially be, I guess, linear TV. I guess how much of a loser could linear TV be, especially if you do see something like the rights to NFL in the coming years go strictly to the streamers? Yeah, so I think sports is the main thing that's holding people on to skinny bundles and big bundles. But um, I do think what you're going to end up with is a sort of SVOD services that are free. Yep. Or to you, they seem free because you're bundling it in with something you already are buying anyway. And then you're going to have these specials, I'm going to call them special interest, super served niches like WWE you might get or the rugby channel. And I don't know that... Um, sports is really going to be able to either afford those or garner the audiences. Like, you might put Thursday night on Amazon, but you're not putting a lot. You have to be on a broadcaster. You've got to reach everybody if you want to create the next generation of Jets fans. But WWE was one of the first ones out of the yep. gate with an OTT service, it right? It was. And it's still growing, even in the face of all these general interest growers. So we'll see how the special interest... Um, but I see consolidation. I think they have to do roll-ups and they have to consolidate and they've got to have bigger balance sheets behind them.